Hello and welcome to this worship video of St Andrews, Wallace Green and Lowick, Church of Scotland. It's good to see you. In this worship video, we're going to be thinking about the importance of being honest with God. It's, of course, important to be honest with other folk, but also to be truthful when we come to God and sharing our thoughts and feelings, our struggles and faith and in life in general. But as we are honest with God, it's also important to expect that through prayer and through being in God's presence and asking for God's help, that God can make a difference to our lives, that our faith can help us progress things and cope with the difficulties that present themselves to us as we go on through life. And so we'll think about these two themes in this worship video. But first of all, we're going to listen to a hymn that reminds us that our hope is founded in God's presence and in God's faithfulness. I will praise your faithfulness, my God. On my harp I will play hymns to you, the Holy One of Israel. I will sing for joy to you. With my whole being I will sing because you have saved me. Eternal God, we give you thanks this day as we gather. We give you thanks for your faithfulness to us down through the years. We thank you for those folk that first introduced us to your love. 
for those who've cared for us and nurtured us in the way through which we see your love and grace. We thank you for those moments when we have been struck by a new sense of your justice and your care. And we thank you that even today we are aware of your presence. Lord, we are sorry for the times that we have not lived up to the standards that we see in Christ. He was so loving and kind, just with a fiery anger at injustice. And we so fall short of that standard. And so we ask you to forgive us and to convince us that whatever we've done and said, your love is unbreakable, ever extending forgiveness to us and calling us to a new way of life. And now hear us as we pray together in Jesus' words. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever. Amen. Lord, I have come to you for protection. Never let me be defeated. Because you are righteous, help me and rescue me. Listen to me and save me. Be my secure shelter and a strong fortress to protect me. You are my refuge and defence. My God, rescue me from the wicked, from the power of those who are cruel and evil. Sovereign Lord, I put my hope in you. I have trusted in you since I was young. I have relied on you all my life. You have protected me since the day I was born. I will always praise you. My life has been an example to many because you have been my strong defender. All day long I praise you and proclaim your glory. Do not reject me now that I am old. Do not abandon me now that I am feeble. My enemies want to kill me. They talk and plot against me. They say, God has abandoned him. Let's go after him and catch him. There is no one to rescue him. Don't stay so far away, O God. My God, hurry to my aid. May those who attack me be defeated and destroyed. May those who try to hurt me be shamed and disgraced. I will always put my hope in you. I will praise you more and more. I will tell of your goodness. All day long I will speak of your salvation, though it is more than I can understand. I will go in the strength of the Lord God. I will proclaim your goodness, yours alone. You have taught me ever since I was young, and I still tell of your wonderful acts. Now that I am old and my hair is grey, do not abandon me, O God. Be with me while I proclaim your power and might to all generations to come. Your righteousness, God, reaches the skies. You have done great things. There is no one like you. You have sent troubles and suffering on me. But you will restore my strength. You will keep me from the grave. You will make me greater than ever. You will comfort me again. I will indeed praise you with the harp. I will praise your faithfulness, my God. On my harp I will play hymns to you, the Holy One of Israel. I will shout for joy as I play for you. With my whole being I will sing because you have saved me. I will speak of your righteousness all day long, because those who try to harm me have been defeated and disgraced. Here endeth the reading. May the Lord bless this reading of his holy word. Amen.
Jesus love is very wonderful Jesus love is very wonderful Jesus love is very wonderful Oh wonderful love So high can't get over it so low can't get under it so wide can't get round it Oh wonderful love Jesus love is very wonderful Jesus love is very wonderful Jesus love is very wonderful Oh wonderful love So high can't get over it so low can't get under it so wide can't get round it Oh wonderful love Sometimes I find the Psalms a little difficult. I wonder if you find that. I find that the thoughts and beliefs that some of the Psalms have kind of jar with my own religious understandings. And that's certainly true of Psalm 71. The Psalm has a simple purpose. It expresses the problem that the psalmist is facing. As he puts it, my enemies want to kill me, they talk and plot against me. They say, God has abandoned him. Let's go after him and catch him. There is no one to rescue him. How the psalmist or songwriter or poet is feeling is also expressed in this psalm. There is a sense of desperation in his words. Help me and rescue me. Listen to me and save me. Don't reject me now that I am old. Don't abandon me now that I am feeble. Now that I am old and my hair is grey, do not abandon me, O God. Here is someone who is vulnerable standing on the edge of a precipice, afraid. Sometimes it's said that this psalm is a lament and it certainly expresses the psalmist's feelings about his circumstances to God. The psalmist also gives a glimpse in this song into how he understands his situation. He blames his predicament, whatever it is, on his enemies, but also on God. You sent troubles and suffering on me. It's telling that he never seems to recognise that he himself might be part of the problem. It's very easy in times of stress to lose all sense of perspective. And in the psalmist's view, the answer to his problem lies with God. Listen to me and save me. Be my secure shelter and a strong fortress. Rescue me from the wicked men. Show your righteousness as you have done in the past and I will praise you in return. I will shout for joy as I play for you. I will speak of your righteousness all day long. How do we make sense, I wonder, of what the psalmist is saying? Do we think he's right in saying that God has sent his problems? Does he have no responsibility himself? Will the destruction of his enemies really be the solution, bearing in mind Gandhi's wise words that an eye for an eye leaves both people blind? These are genuine questions that we might ask about Psalm 71. But whether or not we have definitive answers to these questions, I think there's a lot to learn from the psalmist's underlying attitudes. And the first is that his prayer is nothing if it's not honest. It articulates his deep sense 
of desperation. It's a heart speaking to a heart. It's a prayer that has none of the niceties that we commonly attach to prayers. I'm glad that the psalmist is so ready to speak about his vulnerabilities and of his anger and that he's so ready to bring these into his prayers. We all need to be honest in God's presence. After all, God already knows what we're feeling. But our honesty with him helps us to own our feelings in God's presence. And as we do so, we learn to depend upon God's love for us, which is always much greater than any thoughts and feelings that we might have. Sometimes our lack of honesty in our prayers is to do with a lack of trust in God. We think, if God knows how I really feel, will God still love me? And the answer to that question is a thunderous yes. God's love is never conditioned by who we are or what we've done or even what we're feeling at the moment. We can rely on God's love, which I think is an invitation to honesty in our prayers. Let's then learn to be honest with God. God knows us. He has known us from the day that we were born. He loves us and nothing that we do or say or feel can ever destroy that love. But if we're honest with him, our understanding of the depth of God's love grows day by day. It was the writer Pope who once said, an honest man's the noblest work of God. And Robert Burns added, an honest man's a boon them all. Honesty is a quality that we ought to seek and cherish. And that's certainly true when it comes to our prayers. A survey in America showed some disturbing results. It said that 91% of the respondents stretch the truth about trivial matters. 36% sometimes stretch the truth about important matters too. 86% regularly mislead their parents. 75% their friends. 73% their siblings. And 69% their spouses. Honesty isn't always the easiest thing. It requires deep trust in the other, but it's the best thing, and God wants us to be honest with him. So the psalmist is honest, but secondly, he's someone who believes that prayer can make a difference. Now, we might have qualms about the answer that the psalmist is looking for. He wants the defeat and disgrace of his enemies. But we can surely admire his conviction that when faced with a difficulty or problem, that the right thing to do is to bring that problem to God and that God can make a difference. What difference, then, will prayer make? Well, let me put my finger on one great difference that prayer can always make. We are closest to Jesus in our prayers when, instead of asking God to show us the future or make a particular thing happen, we instead pray that we might be faithful to the way of Christ in whatever does happen. Surely then God will help us to live in Christ's way if we ask him to. Which of course is a very different thing from saying that God will give us all that we desire or make our lives easy. A man once once seeing his son off 
to service in the American Navy during the Second World War. The father said, I'll pray that God will bring you home safely. No, said the son, pray that I may have the courage to do my duty. Sometime later, word came through that the son's ship had been sunk and that he had gone down with the ship. But further word came through to say that in the moment of crisis, he had done his duty. He had shown care to others. His courage hadn't failed. The father's prayers had been answered. What do we learn then from the psalmist today? In many ways, his way of seeing the world is very different from ours. But there is still so much that we can learn from him about prayer. That we ought to have confidence to be honest with God. And that prayer always makes a difference. May God bless us with wonder at creation's glory. May God bless us with fury at creation's spoiling. May God bless us with courage at this critical hour. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit rest upon us and all creation, this day 
and for the future to come. Amen.